water. Earth. Fire. Air. Welcome back, everyone. Happy holidays. We just found out what the new animated Avatar The Last Airbender series is going to be, or the first new series. It confirms a lot of our theories. There's also a lot of news about the upcoming animated movies that they're in the middle of making right now and the new live-action Netflix series, so we'll break it all down. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I will be doing more Avatar videos this year just because a lot of stuff is happening. They will actually start premiering those live-action Netflix episodes, too. Good or bad, whatever winds up happening with that, I'll at least do some videos for that. But that's like a completely separate thing from Avatar Studios and the animated Avatar The Last Airbender series and movies that Mike and Brian are making. I'm expecting the new live-action Netflix series to premiere either towards the end of the summer or later this year, so we'll probably get a trailer in the next couple of months. But the really good news you probably just saw in your feeds is that Mike and Brian's first new, remember this, first new but not last new animated Avatar The Last Airbender series is now confirmed to be about the next Avatar after Korra, moving the timeline forward the same way that Korra just came after Aang. The Avatar cycle goes fire, air, water, and earth. So when Mike and Brian first announced that they were making new animated Avatar movies and series, most of us just speculated that they'd logically just move the timeline forward and do the next Avatar after Korra, which would be an Earthbender Avatar. But they are also doing stuff earlier in the timeline too, like they'll be jumping all over the timeline in a bunch of different types of projects. I'll explain later in the video. But the new full regular animated series will just pick up after Korra has died and the new Earthbender Avatar is born. They haven't announced who the person's name is or if it's going to be a female or a male avatar, but if you've been following the story of Korra in the comics that explains what happens to her after the events of the finale, her lifespan is meant to be fairly typical of the majority of all avatars, meaning she lived beyond 100 years old. What you would consider like a slightly longer lifespan for a really healthy person living past 100 in the avatar universe isn't uncommon for regular people. The only major exceptions to how long avatars live are when they're either killed in battle, like killed under mysterious circumstances, or the most famous examples being Avatar Kyoshi and Avatar Aang. Aang died when he was 66 chronologically, and at the time it was considered a very early death in terms of his years spent walking around like chronologically, but biologically he died at the age of 166 because he was stuck in the ice for over 100 years, and being in the avatar state for that long just took a huge toll on his body. Had that not happened, he would have just lived a normal lifespan well past 100 years. The other exception, like on the other end of that, is Kyoshi, who lived way longer than most avatars. She was about 200 years old when she died, but she was a beast. She was also just physically way bigger than most people. One of the new animated movies that they're doing is a Kyoshi movie. I'll talk about that later in the video. So they are doing a lot of new Kyoshi stuff too. But the idea is that this new Earthbender Avatar series after Korra would pick up about 100 years after the Korra finale, close to or at real world present day, like a modern day Avatar, like a lot of people wondered that they would do. So the idea is that during the events of Korra, Republic City, for example, had a very roaring 20s inspired vibe with the design and the level of technology, the way bending had evolved. This new series would look more like our real world present day, like an Avatar walking around with our current level of technology. But remember, this is the Avatar universe, so it's not always like a one-to-one -one comparison. Like, the best example being, will this new Avatar be the one who walks around with an iPhone in his or her pocket, like the TikTok Avatar? Please don't put TikTok in the Avatar universe, we could do without that. This is where I think Mike and Brian will change a couple things, like the current period in the Avatar universe will just be similar in the way science starts to rival traditional use of bending elements. Like during the events of Legend of Korra, their big thing was showing that just 50 years plus after Avatar The Last Airbender, society had evolved to start harnessing lightning bending powers to generate electricity. People like Kuvira began to harness spirit energy taken from the vines and the world tree, using them to power weapons and technology. People like Beifong were using their metal bending abilities to power their technology for crime fighting. Like not just their tactics, but also their armor, their weaponry. What we'll probably see is more of that kind of thinking, like scientists in the future of the Avatar universe finding new ways of exploiting bending energy, cosmic energy, from the spirit world, for weapons, for technology, even for just regular everyday stuff that non-benders use and take advantage of. They started to get into this idea during Korra Season 4, where some people had started to harvest, abuse spirit energy, cosmic energy, the spirit world started to fight back, the spirits themselves, the biological life that originated there, like the vines that started to take over Republic City. Even though Korra pacified Kuvira in the finale and her weapon, the whole idea is that she opened a new permanent 
portal to the spirit realm of Republic City. So travel between the spirit realm and the regular world became much more common. And that wasn't meant to be the end of the conflict. Like everybody does not live in peace after that. People are always going to try and use resources like that to exploit the spirit world, bending to personal gain, exploit just the regular world in general, exploit the earth. Like imagine an Avatar series where everybody's using iPhones just because it's modern day level of technology, but they're powered by spirit energy and it turns out that that's basically sucking the energy out of the spirit world, slowly killing it. So when the way the Korra series in general had started to get into the balance between bending and technology, a modern day Avatar series would be all about that. Like what happens to bending if science and technology gives everyone the same level of abilities that comes with being a bender, if not greater abilities? Like the other cool thing being that every time they do advance the timeline of the Avatar universe is that bending in general just evolves as people come up with more creative ways to use their bending powers. You start to see even more specialized forms of subbending. Toph is one of the best examples, a regular earthbender who discovered metal bending or created metal bending, fire bending evolving into lightning bending, so that will continue in this new series too. Let me know in the comments what kind of sub styles of bending do you want to see just based on what we've already seen from sub bending styles. Remember it'd be like even more specialized forms of sub bending. For example electricity bending evolving to the level where they can bend electrical signals inside machines, controlling machines with their bending like you would control a puppet. An avatar who could control your phone because of the way they can manipulate electrical signals flowing through it. Benders who can control the weather. Also the whole idea that scientists in the avatar universe can find a way to clone bending abilities using technology so that non-benders could just wear gear that allows them to bend one or multiple elements. Like what does the avatar do when anyone can bend all four elements or anyone can energy bend which is supposed to be like the most S tier form of bending that's hard for even avatars to do. I know there's also a big question about the way avatars access their previous lives because during the events of Korra, Unalak essentially destroyed her access to the previous lives with Vatu's dark avatar powers. After that, Korra never got access to those previous avatars again. She could only speak with Rava, which was something that previous avatars weren't supposed to be able to do. Like maybe a few were able to, but in general when Korra did it, it was thought to be a relatively new thing. Like Rava had always been there inside the other avatars, but you never hear about Aang chatting it up with Rava. Meaning that when this new Earthbender avatar comes along a hundred years later, he'd only be able to speak with Korra, Spirit, or Rava. Unless they introduce some new weird wrinkle to the way avatar powers work. Right now the target release date is the end of 2025 right after the new animated Avatar The Last Airbender movie comes out. So you kind of see what they're doing here. They're going to try and release that new movie in October 2025 and then like right after that the series picks up. But the first new animated Avatar movie is going to be about older Aang and the older Avatar characters from The Last Airbender after the events of the finale. But they haven't said whether or not they're going to cover things that they've already done in the comics. Maybe some things but probably not exactly one to one copies of what they did in the comics. If you haven't read any of those, the comics basically tell you exactly what happens to them right after the finale. Like Aang and Fire Lord Zuko create Republic City or they start creating Republic City, takes a while to build it. Azula comes back to harass Zuko doing exactly what you would expect adult Azula to do. They explain who Toph's baby daddies are, she had two different baby daddies. And they explain what happened to Zuko's mother. I've already done a couple of videos about all that stuff so I'll post links for that stuff in the description below. The new Avatar series will run at the same time as the live action Netflix series, but the live action Netflix episodes are just retelling the events of the original Avatar The Last Airbender animated series with Aang. And by the time the new animated series premieres, we'll be in like season two of the live action series. I'm only expecting that new Netflix series to run for a couple seasons. They haven't said how many seasons the new animated series will run, probably like three or four like Korra did. And while that's happening, every two or every three years, they'll release a new animated Avatar movie. They've already announced three movies total. The first one is with the adult gang, but the second two are a Zuko movie and a Kyoshi movie. They didn't say which order they're going to do them in, but I'm assuming right now it starts with the Avatar The Last Airbender movie about the whole gang because they've confirmed that, then the Zuko movie, and then the Kyoshi movie. There will be more animated movies and more animated series after these first ones from Mike and Brian. They probably won't talk about the other stuff till after later seasons of this first new one though. So like this is meant to be the beginning of a big avatar universe of shows from all across the timeline. So when you're all old and gray and you have like great grandchildren, you'll be telling them about the original avatar series as the new one gets ready to premiere. Like ah, the 10th new avatar series, can't wait to talk about it. It'll be a lot of fun. They've also said that they're evolving or changing the animation style for the upcoming movie. They'll probably do the same thing for the Avatar TV series as well. 
They did say that they wanted all their upcoming projects, like all the different movies in the series, to all feel and look very different, but they did say the first upcoming movie will feature computer-assisted animation in the style of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Like, that kind of computer-assisted animation is coming from the same studio that also animated Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which actually has pretty solid animation. The Netflix account was teasing some Avatar stuff, so they might make some more announcements or drop a teaser video for that new live-action Netflix series pretty soon. Whatever they wind up releasing, of course I'll do a video for it. Everyone click here for my Loki Season 2 trailer video, and click here for that new Henry Cavill Warhammer trailer. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.